But let it, following the evidence wherever it leads, without a controlling theory that tells you what to ferret out of the documents he reads, and, or, or how to give a spin to them so that Joan Smith is sympathetic with homosexual behavior, to put that. Uh, this business of, oh, we don't, we don't start with a theory, we just let the truth speak itself through it, is just bunk. It's just bunk. And I thought it was useful to point that out. <laughs> Now, if you want to find out who has, what, what kind of histories have been written that talk about a naturalistic explanation of the Book of Mormon, first place to go is Jan Schiff's The Prophet Puzzle, which has been pub was published in 1974, 1992, and 1999 without, without substantial change. A little, a little polish. And in it, she says, one vexing problem is how you deal with the Book of Mormon. She sees the central problem and ex has explained in, in some satisfactory manner the Book of Mormon. And then, and then she goes on to pr provide uh, a naturalistic explanation. Joseph uh, either found some Indian artifacts or wished to find them, and then he had a very expansive uh, imagination and out popped the Book of Mormon. Or, um, the next one to look at is Larry Foster. This book, uh, Religion and Sexuality, has been printed in two different, under two different titles. He starts out, he, he wants to provide a comprehensive, naturalistic explanation, which somewhere is not conscious fraud, but isn't ancient history. Now, there, look, if people say it's either a fraud or it's, it's, it's uh, authentic, there is a middle ground between those two. It's sincerely deceived, didn't know what he was doing. Um, see, but there isn't a middle ground between between authentic ancient text and some kind of frontier fiction. Now you can put the argument that it isn't true in ways which don't use harsh words. You can say Joseph was a religious genius, Jan Shoes. You could even say he was a prophet if you don't mean what we mean by it. And there's some of that. Uh, some of you were enthralled by Harold Bloom's talk about that. It's spilled poetry. Or whatever. Where he doesn't believe in God. But uh, he does believe in human creativity and that's what he means by prophets. So one has to read carefully. Well, anyway, what Foster argues is that it is uh, a trans uh, a trans phenomenon, similar. Um, well, it's, it's best understood as a transrelated production, and uh, he toys with the idea of automatic writing. Joseph just had something about him, an odd personality, and when he just could dictate this stuff. And he didn't know that it wasn't ancient. He thought it was. He was sincere. He was sincerely, whatever automatic writers, if there are such things, uh, are. Well, more recently, he said, oh, he was a bipolar manic depressing. <laughs> like Jesus. And Gandhi and Luther. <laughs> if we only had lithium or shock treatment, we wouldn't have any religion. <laughs> Or, uh, or there, I mean, there, there are two nice little naturalistic treatments in the Book of Mormon, both by people who were once in the Restoration tradition. A guy by the name of Moraine, who's, uh, who's, uh, was, who is or was RLDS, and the other one, Paul uh, William Anderson, who once served the mission even, but is now in this psychological explanation of the Book of Mormon. That's naturalistic. Well, I just about used up my time. There are other examples of this. Um, no, I, I'm almost tempted to ask, who was this historian that Ford, that, that Ruthman interviewed? Don't, Dan can't, Dan can't reveal it because he knows. <laughs> what? Not you. 
No, 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 I'm not. I'm a political scientist. Incidentally, I, I am, I'm a political scientist, but I do intellectual history. It isn't, it isn't uh, forts, camps, and trails. And I wandered into, into talking about the church. <laughs> there, there, are, there are various ways of doing it. The history of this stuff is history. It just isn't. They often will say, well, why don't you write a book? Why, don't, why do you criticize others? Because that, that's my style. <laughs> <laughs> this is the preface to Leonard Arrington's Great Basin of Kingdom. The approach to Mormonism in this book is that religion with all its social institutions must be judged according to its usefulness in attacking the ageless problems of humanity. If, as the Mormons believe, Joseph Smith was personally commissioned by God to form the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the best evidence in favor of the theory, the be best evidences, I'm sorry, are the essential social usefulness of the church. He thereby charted a new approach to Joseph Smith's prophetic truth claims. He called it, and, and, and he, he then called this a naturalistic treatment of what may be called the Mormon myth. And that, what he quotes that, that's what he means by natural explanation. Now, the, well, one fellow has recently said that if you say something that writes naturalistic history, they looked, the key, this fellow looked up the word naturalistic, couldn't find a dictionary, found naturalism, found a philosophy, uh, a world, a worldview that in, among some philosophers in which God is excluded, and therefore, uh, when you say you're giving a naturalistic explanation of something, you are an atheist. But folks, if someone were, I'll be honest with you about this, if someone would ask me if it was completely based on a revelation, I don't think so. I would give a naturalistic explanation of it. I think it grew out of circumstances. Now, that doesn't mean, I, that doesn't mean that I don't believe in God or any of that. I just don't believe that particular policy was grounded in a revelation. And that doesn't make me an atheist. And not only that, most of our anti-Mormon friends will give naturalistic explanations of the Book of Mormon, but they don't they believe in God in their own way. So the adjective naturalistic does not necessarily mean atheism, though it could mean atheism. Fawn Brody and Dale Morgan, who was a mentor on this, they describe themselves as atheists, and they describe the use of, they, they describe their explanations as naturalistic. Well, anyway, the, uh, uh, while the Mormon story may not appeal, this is what the term again, to the rational faculty of the majority as an objective picture of the world about us, there can be no doubt that somehow or other it tapped immense creative forces in those believing in the Lord as a usefulness in coping with the age old problems. Then he added, a naturalistic discussion of the people and the times and the mind and experience of Latter day Saint prophets is therefore a perfectly valid aspect of religious history and indeed makes more plausible the truths they attempted to convey. While the discussion of naturalistic causes of revelation does not preclude it, its claim to be revealed or inspired of God, it doesn't preclude it. In practice, it is difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish what is objectively revealed from what is subjectively contributed by those receiving the revelation. Now that was and that's been quoted all over the place. And that's what's behind Walker. Walker's uh, treatment of this issue. And if you seem to be critical of that, which I am, I think it's muddy and confused. And not only that, I, uh, I mean, uh, 
Well, in the first, in the first issue of dialogue, in the first essay, in that 